proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we just finished a great lesson dealing with the fundamentals of salvation, the basis of, of salvation. So today, we're going to journey into a new series of studies, that is the Highway of Holiness from Isaiah 35, 8 through 10. So as usual now, hope you got your pen, your paper, and as Brother Pound say, your big book of Bible open ready to follow right along with us as we get right into our studies this morning. Good morning, Brother Pound. Good morning, Minister Seawright. Good morning, Elder McMillan. Good morning, Minister Pounds, and good morning to everyone in our listening audience. What a joy, what a privilege, what a great honor this is to be able to come into the confines of your homes, to be able to come into the confines of your automobiles or wherever. Our voices may be heard mm -hmm. this bright and early Lord's Day morning to bring unto you again another word from the word, yeah, from uh, the word. Jesus, the Messianic master from the dusty streets of Nazareth. Well, he declared in John 8 and verse 132, Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth mm -hmm. and the truth shall make you free. Mm -hmm. My friend, we're always concerned about the truth because you got to uh, be mindful that it's going to be the truth that all of us are going to have to face and we'll be measured, my friend, not by your neighbor. Mm. We'll be measured by the truth. Okay. And so what a joy this is to be able to come and share with you on today. My friend, as Minister Seawright has already mentioned, we're going to talk about this highway. Uh, because Isaiah prophesied in days gone by that God uh, mentions a highway. Mm -hmm. And we need to talk about this this highway. Sometimes preachers preach about this highway to heaven. Yeah. And let, let's talk about let's talk uh, this highway, yes, sir. Uh, my friend. And I think if, you, uh, if you'll be wise, my friend, it will do you good to listen uh, attentively to the things that are going to be said. We're going to ask Edward Miller, he doesn't mind getting started. Sir, we're greatly appreciated. Yes, sir. We're going to turn back to the Old Testament first. My friends, go back to the book of Isaiah and uh, uh, chapter 35. And our text is going to be from verses uh, 8 through 10, where the Bible says this, And an highway shall be there, mm. and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Yeah. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, those, the fools shall not err therein. Verse 9 says, No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. What a wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 verse of scriptures here. Uh, these uh, three verses I just read to you in Isaiah 35, where Isaiah is actually uh, giving us, if you will, not only a prophecy concerning uh, the Jewish nation, but also he's looking way forward, way forward. and giving us a prophecy uh, concerning uh, the salvation to come, well. if you will. Uh, and just to, uh, just to quickly uh, give you a, a real quick background, not to get too much into that, but the Jewish nation uh, was taken into captivity. Uh, and you remember uh, back in uh, the book of First Chronicles and Second uh, Kings and and, uh, and 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 various scriptures there, uh, they were taken into captivity by the Assyrian nation, uh, and for many years uh, they were uh, in bondage and in captivity. Uh, and it was uh, not until uh, King Cyrus came along. Uh, over in the book of Ezra, take your time and go back to Ezra chapter 1, and you'll see where uh, King Cyrus uh, was uh, the one who uh, released uh, God's people from captivity, if you will. I'm going to go there now. The Bible says, now the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, 
that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of the, of, of the Cyrus king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven, hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people, his God uh, be with him, and, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord, God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And so, yes, uh, in Isaiah again, uh, there was going to be a period of rejoicing uh, when uh, God's people now are going to be released from bondage, and, and they're going to once again uh, be able to go back to their land in Jerusalem. And so as we go back to the text now, uh, uh, Isaiah says again, and a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness, and the unclean shall not pass over it, and it shall, it shall uh, be for those uh, wayfaring men, those fools shall not err uh, uh, therein. Uh, uh, and, and there are many other scriptures that we can talk about uh, that uh, relate to uh, this prophecy that we're reading about uh, over here in, uh, in Isaiah, uh, where, uh, in, uh, Isaiah, where he says again, no lion shall be there, uh, and, and, and nor any ravenous beast. And so again, uh, God is going to release his people, and, and they're going to be able to be joyous again and go back to reclaim the land of their people promise, if you will. But let's go forward now. Let's go forward because I want you to understand that when Isaiah talks about uh, the highway of holiness, uh, he's talking about that way that came through Jesus the Christ. Yeah. You remember in John chapter 14, Jesus himself said, for I am the way, That's right. the truth, and the light. That's right. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so I I Isaiah is looking way forward now to the time where all men, not just the, the, the people of Israel, but all men could travel this highway to heaven. Mm -hmm. This highway to heaven that was uh, made possible through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ when he came down from glory and tabernacled among men uh, in the form of flesh and, and, and became a, a salvation for all mankind. Not only that, this way that Jesus said, uh, that, that we're talking about, it's, it's said of, of in, in several scriptures, it's said to be the way. John 14 and 6 again, in Acts 19 and 9, the way. In Acts 19 and 23, the way. And Acts 9 and 2 is called the way. And you remember not just the last lesson that we were on over in Matthew chapter 7. It's called the narrow way. Because the Bible says in Matthew 7 and, and verse uh, uh, number 13 yeah, he yeah. says, uh, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Right. And so, my friend, this highway to heaven is the way that was made possible by Jesus the Christ. This highway to heaven was uh, made possible when Jesus came down from glory to, to, to this earth and died on the cross of Calvary for the sins of the whole world. Now, uh, we are released from cap just like the Jews were released from captivity, we are also released from our spiritual captivity because, my friends, until we obey Christ, until we are uh, uh, on this highway to heaven, we are in spiritual captivity through the bondage of sin. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember over in the book of John, chapter 8, uh, uh, the Bible, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. That's right. And then, of course, in Romans 6 and, and verse 16, uh, the Bible there says, Know ye not that the whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, 
His servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And so, my friend, uh, they, the Jews, the, ch the children of Israel, were in bondage uh, to the uh, Assyrians and mm -hmm. uh, and to others, and to the Babylonians, uh, and, and, and they were eventually released. But, my friend, this is foreshadowing the bondage that we are in yeah. when we are in bondage to sin, and we can also be rejoicing because salvation has come down, yeah. and we can be released from the bondage of sin when we get on the highway to heaven, which is provided by Jesus the Christ. Uh, and, and, and I hope I don't step on any toes, but over in Romans again, I just need to go there before I finish up, over in Romans again, uh, chapter 6, we get on this highway to heaven when we obey Jesus Christ right. through baptism. Right. And he puts us in his kingdom and then, my friends, we can travel on that road to heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, this you can only get on that road when you obey the Christ. And once you obey him, he puts you in his family, you are then in the kingdom and in the, in the, in the, in the kingdom way, which is that highway that Isaiah talks about. And my friend, that puts you in this place where you can be rejoicing because you know uh, you are safe. No lions are in the way. God protects you. I mean, there's so much in that chapter oh, back in Isaiah we could talk about. But the, the, the lesson essentially is helping us to see that just like the children of Israel were in bondage, when we are in sin, we are also in bondage. Just like the children of Israel were released from captivity and could return to their homeland, we also, when we obey the Christ, we can be released from spiritual bondage, from captivity to sin, and we can be on that highway to heaven, yes, going to be with our Lord and be with him forever in our heavenly home. And so this highway to heaven, you want to learn about this and stay with us as we go into this deeper so that you also can get on this highway to heaven. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Appreciate that, elderly brother. That's the highway that one. constructed by God, mm -hmm. built by Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And my friend, if you want to go to heaven, there's only one way. Only. And thank God it is a highway yes, and sir. it leads it leads to heaven. Yeah. We appreciate that so much, Elbert Mellon, in regards to helping us um, to see that in regards to the prophecy. That not only was it a prophecy of the present day, but also it was a prophecy of the future uh, in regards to it was a national fulfillment and also the universal uh, fulfillment. We appreciate that uh, so very, very much. And then uh, one of the things that, that's going to be so uh, interesting about this is the, is the concept uh, about the return, that there will be um, a a return mm -hmm. um, and reading Isaiah this is what Isaiah was alluding to yeah. in regards to God freeing his people mm -hmm. that there will be a return is that your understanding Mr. C. right? yes sir but upon that is definitely my understanding thank you for helping us to see that truth is what we're going to be measured by not our neighbor and then brother Mike will helping us to see that way and you helping us to see that it's only one way and that one way as, as brother Mike Miller has alluded to was brought to us by Christ. The Hebrew writer writes about uh, that way in this vein, in, in the book of Hebrew, chapter 12, verse number 18. Listen to him now. He says, For we are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burn with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice that they heard and treated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much be as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Read all that together. He said, but Ye are come unto the Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God. Here we go. The heavenly Jerusalem. And to an innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly. And to the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. And to the judge of all. 
and to the spirits of just men made perfect. And to Jesus, here we go, the mediator, here we go, of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. What do we have here? Well, we have the contrast between the old covenant and the new covenant, the old way and the new way. And here we have, here, the Hebrew writer contrasts what happened on Mount Sinai when God gave the law. When God gave the law, he said that uh, there was burning and fire, and then there was blackness and darkness, and then the sound of the trumpet. Taken from, from the book of Exodus. Exodus uh, chapter 19, I, I believe it is. We'll run, run over there real quick. Exodus, Exodus chapter uh, 19, and, and we'll start at at about where I want to go at verse number 16 the Bible says and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were here we go, thunders and lightning and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet is sitting loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled and Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the needle part of the mount and Mount Sinai was all together together uh, on smoke and because the Lord descended upon it with fire and smoke thereof uh, and ascended as the smoke of the furnace and the whole mountain quaked uh, greatly and when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder Moses spake and God answered him by a voice and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain and the Lord called uh, upon Moses to the top of the mountain and Moses went up and the Lord said unto Moses go down and charge people lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze that many of them perish and so here we have uh, what had happened on Mount Sinai when, when God gave the law but the Hebrew writer says but now uh, in verse 22, we are not come unto, he said, but we are come unto Mount Zion. He said, not Mount, Mount Sinai, that, that, that material, uh, that physical mountain, but we have come to Mount Zion, to, unto the city, here we go, of the living God, the city of the living God to an innumerable company of angels. And why, why is this significant? This is significant because God himself is the architect and the builder of this city. We'll go to Hebrew 11 and 10. And then he says to the general assembly, to the church of the firstborn, which were written in heaven, and to, to the God that judges all. And then he said to Jesus, the mediator, here we go, of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaking, here we go, better things than that of Abel. Why is this significant? Because you remember when Cain killed his brother Abel and God comes to Cain and when God comes to Cain, uh, what was demanded then was judgment and justice. But I want you to know under the new covenant, we have a greater mediator than that of Moses and that is Jesus the Christ. And Jesus shed his blood uh, Abel gave his sacrifice, was a good sacrifice, but we have a greater sacrifice because under this sacrifice, God doesn't require justice, but he gives us mercy. He doesn't give us judgment, but he gives us forgiveness. And so now we don't have to worry about vengeance, but we get grace. And so we have a better covenant. No, we have a better covenant in this highway that we're talking about because look with me in Hebrews the chapter is 9 and uh, the Hebrew the chapter is 10 uh, and want to go uh, to Hebrews chapter 10 and look with me uh, if you will to verse number 14 he says for by one offering there it is he has per he perfected forever them that are sanctified Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness of us. For after that he has said before, he said, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. He said, I will pour 
And he said, I will put my laws, here we go, in their heart and in their mind, and I will write them. Uh, the, the law was written on table of stone, but God's law now is going to be written in the minds of men. And then he said, and their sins and their iniquities, <clears throat> I will remember no more. He said, now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. For having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness, he said, here we go, by the blood of Jesus. Read all that to get to this verse. He said, by here we go, a new and a living way, which he has consecrated for us. How did he do it? Like, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And so what do we have? Under the old covenant, the high priest had to go in once a year and give a sacrifice for his sin and uh, for the people. But my Lord uh, gave his life, not for his sin, but for our sin. Went in there, went to the holy of the holies. The high priest had to keep coming <coughs> excuse me, every year. To give a sacrifice because their sins were only rolled away. But when my Lord gave the sacrifice, it was once and for all. He died for mankind. And now this new covenant, which is the, the ushering in of this new highway, man has to uh, get into this highway in order to be saved. And as Brother <clears throat> Powers had first stated, that this highway is only one way. I know that's only one way because as Brother Mike Miller has already first stated, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, listen, he said, enter to end. He said, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, he was going, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in uh, thereat. He said, because straight is the gate, he said, and here we go, narrow is the way which what? Leadeth unto life, and few there be that, that find it. And so, what do we have? We have the way of destruction, many going to go. But the way uh, of salvation, a few is going to go. And so that few is those who obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know that to be true. Because don't you remember, Saul uh, of Tarsus, when he persecuted this way, as Brother Mike Miller has already stated, he talked about it in uh, Acts chapter 22 and verse um, number 1. We're going to start there. He said, men, brethren, he said, and fathers, hear my defense which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in a Hebrew tongue to them, they kept them more silent. And he said, he said, I am very a man, here we go, which I am a Jew. You know, he was under the old covenant, born in Tarsus, in the city of Sicilia. He said, and brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. He said, and taught <clears throat> according to the perfect man, here we go, of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God as ye are all this day. He said, and here we go, and I persecuted this way unto death. He said, binding and delivering into prison both men and women. But he persecuted those in this way, but saw he met uh, his match when he met Jesus on the road to the master. And when you continue in, in, in this chapter, in verse number 10, he said, and uh, when he met Jesus, he said, he said, what shall I do, Lord, after he knocked him down? He said, and the Lord said unto me, arise and go unto the master, and there it should be told thee all things which are appointed unto thee. And we, we won't read the whole thing, but he does as Jesus tells him. And then the Bible says in verse number 16, he said, uh, and when Ananias gets to him, Ananias tells him, and, and now. Why tarry thou? Arise and be baptized. Wash away their sin, calling on the name of the Lord. And so if you're going to get into this way today, you're going to have to do what um, Saul did. Um, you're going to have to turn your back on the old way and enter into the new covenant, the new way, and be baptized for the remission of your sin. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. Minister C. I appreciate that, Emily McMillan. 
a uh, great job today, uh, brothers, in regards to looking at this highway. This how we continue to talk about this because I think we need to understand this. This this highway, highway of holiness, only one. Only one. My friend, there's no choice. There's only one. Only one. Uh, and which means this highway is helping us understand there's only one way. Only one way. And, and you're going to see this, that this way that's constructed by God, my friend, it is built on Jesus. Yes. And, and Jesus becomes the way. The way. And if you're going to go to heaven, no wonder Jesus said in John 14, 6, there it is. I am the, the way, the truth, the life. No man. No man. Coming to the Father, but by me. When Jesus says, I am, I'm the way. Without him, there is, there's no going. Yeah. I am the, he said, I'm the way, the truth. Yeah. Without him, there's no knowing. And then he says, I am the life. Without him, there's no growing. Everything we need is in Jesus yeah, Christ. Exactly. And so we're going to continue to look at this in regards to this very powerful prophecy uh, by Isaiah. As he tells us in regards to that God set it up. We're going to be looking at this in this lesson. You got to understand this, just like highway starts in the mind of men. Well, I uh, know highway is built unless somebody first um, has to have it, the concept of it in their mind. Amen. Architects put it on paper right. yeah. and then builders bring it into fruition. Yes, sir. And we're going to begin to look at this in regards to this way by which and through which God made a way to get man from earth there to heaven with him. All right. We're going to look at this. And that way, my friend, is Jesus Christ. That way. And so we want you to listen to us attentively. Stay with us now as this lesson unfolds and as we begin to show you the truths of God's word in regards to the powerful prophecy of Isaiah and how it comes, my friend, into fulfillment. And you're going to see very plainly in regards to what it is God had in his mind to get man from earth to glory. Yeah. And my friend, and unless we do what God says, unless, right. there's no way we can be saved. Amen. Mr. C. Wright, get us out of here. Thanks for listening. Now, remember, you can hear Brother Pines every day on the Minister at Matter broadcast, Monday through Friday, 11 30 to 11 45. Then on Saturday, Saturday sermon, 1 15 to 1 45. Hit this broadcast again, 9 30 to 10 o'clock. Also, you can listen to our worship of God live every Sunday morning. 10.30 to 11.15. Also on the U YouTube New Testament channel at the same time. And remember now, we're endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So until next time, have a happy and blessed day. New Testament TV. There is no way, only one way.